Entertainment value at Old Trafford is high, very, very high. Whenever United and Liverpool are in town right now, it is a bit of a bonanza. It was a great game again in the end, but it wasn't always that way. Uh, this is our breakdown video. I'm joined by Jay. Welcome along to the chat, everybody. Get your comments in, get your thoughts in. We've seen what people have said and listened to what people have said outside the ground. We've had a chance to let the dust settle and get into it. I'm not going to say any more. You know what I think. I'm just going to go straight to Jay and get your opinions on this. Jay, first of all, everybody, please do just give the video a like. Hit that subscribe button if you are tuning in for the first time. Jay, your thoughts immediately on what happened at Old Trafford today, my man. Okay, so I'm going to preface this, this with the message I sent you for the game. I thought we're going to lose 5-1. I love being proved wrong. I'm glad I was proved wrong. So do we go with glory, glory, main, U, main United? Or do we go with United started playing after 50 minutes only? Um, you were there on the ground, Adam. Um, first half, no shots on target, no shots at all. 0.00 XG. Um, the last time that happened was 2015 v Man City. So the team turned up when Bruno got that fortuitous goal on 58 minutes. Amon Bissaka shit the bed um, into the game, leading 2-1. Does need to make that um, a tackle. We all know now, if a player even sneezes on another player in the box and he goes down, VAR is going to give a penalty, especially against us. So it really depends, Adam, on um, what line you want to go down. Is it a point gained or two points lost? Well, it depends how you look at it in the general scheme of things. Uh, you could look at it with the glass half full and say that's two points from the last nine and a disaster of a run of fixtures from when we finished the international due to... If you look at it in today uh, and just in isolation of this game alone at Liverpool, the form that they're in, 11 wins in the last 13 in the league, in fantastic form, looking indestructible, top of the league, you would say we did well to get a point out of that. But part of me just always goes back to the fact that if we didn't get that ball across uh, the pitch from Kwanzaa, we wouldn't have had a chance in this game. Like I said, that was our first shot on target. The one from Bruno, the chip from 45 yards. It is... It's sad. It's like I cannot get the fact that we had a complete half of football. 50 minutes, in fact. Probably more with the injury time where we couldn't even register a shot in our, on our home pitch. That's hard to take, and that's still there lingering. Like I'm happy with the point. I'm really happy with the point. But there are moments there when you get lucky, you don't have to just accept that you're lucky and you're in the game because you took that opportunity. Can you not use that moment and move forward with it? And I think that's where a lot of people are at, Jay, with this right now. I'll get your opinions on that now. I'll quickly, let's do a couple of super chats. First of all, from MDR Samurai, MDRN Samurai. Thank you, my man. RIP Adam's chair, always in our hearts and prayers. Thank you for the years of loyal service. We've only been going a few months, mate. <laughs> that was of the Chelsea aftermath. God, if you've seen our seats on Old Trafford today and what's happened in the last few games there, then, uh, yeah, they're not going to last much longer either but thanks for that uh, Zane is straight in you're welcome thanks United we put Arsenal top of the league tonight uh, I don't think we'll get as lucky as we did in that game today with Liverpool Jay and we will with Arsenal coming to town but just quickly back to what I was just saying there it's like <clears throat> we get that lucky break we not we, we, we just don't seem to be able to use it like three games in a row where we look down and out pretty much Jay somehow find ourselves back in the game but end up throwing it back away again. It's it's hard to sort of ignore that sort of factor in all of this, isn't it? Yeah, I have it here in my notes, Adam. I go to my infamous uh, notebook and I said, um, and I quote myself back here, Adam, you know how to get to 80th minute and as per usual, weak mentality, last 10 minutes, can't close it out. That's where that was my thoughts on the 88 minutes. And we can't close that on. Yeah. Um, like obviously, you know, the, the goals go in, and, and obviously we're, we're going to discuss the the one strike by 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 Manu was um spring goal first goal in front of Stratford in for for Kobe, but we're leading to one, and I was like, geez, lads, you know, we've been giving 
an opportunity here of a lifetime to beat Liverpool at home and put a serious dent into our title challenge. And as per usual, Adam, we cannot close a game out. We did it last week, last Thursday against Chelsea. We were here um, and we trust fallen Brentford again. So a bunch of footballers cannot close a game out from a winning position and I don't care if we're playing Liverpool I don't care who we're playing game out the players don't have the mentality and the way we do it Adam and, and that's what I'm taking away from the game and I'm not getting drunk on the 2-2 look, look at I'm saying I'm same as yourself but I gotta look at the core facts the player throws a fucking game out that's the fact Adam yeah, there's another one here from uh, Shenanigans, actually, just going into your point there, Jay, pretty much. was We have dropped eight points in our last six games by conceding seven goals after the 85th minute. That pretty much backs it up, Jay, in not being able to close games out. And for Manchester United to be given that chance and that opportunity, when we did not deserve it, no one can tell me that United deserved what we got out of that game today in total. I don't think it was a fair result. I think Liverpool will look at it and go... 28 shots, numerous missed opportunities again from Liverpool. It was like the FA Cup game all over again. United did, to their credit, change the game and use that little bit of a break to take the game in their favour for about 20 minutes, I would have thought. Like a good 20 minutes in that game we got out of it. But uh, in all, Jay, again, them stats like Shenanigan says there, like the amount of point, points that we dropped just through just switching off. And again, more goals coming from crosses today. Another set piece as well, Jay. Yeah, so the goals the last couple of games, Adam, it's, it's either a set piece from, from, a, from a corner kick or it's a simple cutback. So yeah. I, I know we go on about players getting recovery and and whatnot, but you and I both said that maybe him not being in Europe after Christmas, he'd have time on a training ground to iron out the mistakes. And these mistakes are happening over and over again. So it comes to one of two busy things, Adam, um, and the live chat can respond. Of course they can. Either the players are not listening to Ten Hag and his instructions, or the, the training ground in Carrington is an absolute shambles. Like, what the hell are they doing in training? Like, I, I don't know, Adam. You don't you don't know. But it's the same mistakes are happening over and over again. That's what I cannot fathom. Yeah. Mel says, I'm sorry, Adam. I'm no way happy with this. Uh, apparently, Harvey Elliott dived uh, and there was no contact. I've seen the, the things of that. I've seen the uh, replays of that. And yeah. Uh, it wasn't looked at. There wasn't any contact. I don't know if they can give fouls these days for the intent. I, it's a whole world I don't want to get into tonight. I think the performance and everything that is Manchester United's issue right now uh, and the good bits as well, which we're going to get into, uh, is what's more important to talk about. We took four points from Liverpool this season. That's a win. Uh, well, no, we took two uh, and one of the wins was in the FA Cup. Uh, <clears throat> top two geezers in the house as Joe... A United spotlight, a point uh, would have been a good uh, would have been a good one if we hadn't thrown the last two games down the drain. That's a good point there. That's like that. It's like it looks bad. It looks worse than what it is. Like no one would have been. I don't think anyone Jay would have had an issue with a a two two draw when Liverpool have got most of the game. They're a better team. Uh, they're in a better position. They're chasing more than what Manchester United are. A lot more is expected of them. But it's the games before again that this club wants us to forget about. It's like everyone's like, look at what we can do. Like Ten Hag talking afterwards, we were unlucky not to win. We're disappointed we haven't won the game. I think that's a bit rich again coming from uh, a manager that's only just managed a shot that was created by Liverpool in the 50th minute and it's gone in and changed the game a bit. But like, it's like, forget about what's happened before now. We're okay. No, we're not okay. The, the table is at the bottom of the screen there. Spurs won again today. Like Spurs are now out of sight. It's either Villa moving out of sight or Spurs moving out of sight. Two points from nine games after the international break. We were looking at these games and where Manchester United can pick points up. We are literally about, I think, six, maybe five points behind where we thought we might be after the games, after our sort of prediction in the games we had left the last 10 of the season. Now looking with seven games left and we're on 49 points. 
48 points. So is it 49 or 48? Sorry, I just need to double check that, make sure uh, I'm on the money there with that one. Yeah, 49 points for United. Uh, we are 11 behind Villa with a game in hand, which would take it to eight if we won that game in hand. With only seven games to go, Jay. It, that's the problem that a lot of fans have got, I feel. And I think that's what was the mood outside the ground today. It was more on, we can't look at this game on its own because everything that's happened before is still there lingering around in our heads and it will always come back to haunt us. Like, didn't take advantage of the games that we should have won in winning positions in injury time, Jay, again. Adam, I agree. Um, you're a pragmatic fan that's not watching um, the game through rose-tinted spectacles. They will see the full context. Uh, you point out there what has happened before. Now, your rose-tinted spectacles fan will, will go on the fact that uh, Klopp win rate against Ten Hag is percent. Great. Fantastic. Lovely jubbly. However, Klopp pointed out in his interview that if United play like that against Arsenal two weeks time, that Arson would pre the floor with United. I've got Liverpool that. We're across the bottom of the screen now, that quote, if anyone needed to know it. That's yeah, what's on the little clinical for the goal. <laughs> Go on, Jay. Yeah. Um, so Liverpool will never be as on clinical for the goal as they were against us today. Like, the stats here, uh, RXG 0 0.71, Liverpool 3.58, United, uh, nine shots, Liverpool, 20, 28 shots on another day. Um, I beat Onana today. I think he played quite well. Um, along with, um, Kambala and even Maguire. I'm going to give Maguire flowers today. But our midfield, Adam, as per usual, was just devoid of, of anybody, half, half menu. So your favorite fan would go to, oh, yeah, Liverpool. We got a point at Liverpool. We put a dent in their lips. The context is, and you're right, every, it's what's going on before. Two points out of nine, seven games left. And as you reference, we're 11 points off Aston Villa. I think, Adam, in all your years watching night, we will be referencing being 11 points off Aston Villa, fighting for fifth or sixth place. That is where we are now as a club. And that's the bigger picture, Adam. Not getting a point off Liverpool today. No, that's it. It is the bigger picture because it is this stage of the season where the competitions uh, and every point is vital. Like To only take two from these first three games, I think, is pretty much condemned us to hoping that we can finish uh, in the Europa League places. Champions League is, by the by, completely gone, done and dusted. No chance of us getting that now for me. It's way too far ahead. I know Spurs have got to play some big games, but you only have to look at... Uh, where they are and what we've got coming up. Like, I'm not confident about next weekend's game against Bournemouth. I think it's uh, another evening kickoff again for Manchester United. Another banana skin possibly as well. I'm not confident about that game. I'm really not. Like, I'd... The problem I had was, and what I said in my, uh, my post-match review outside the stadium, Jay, was that why are we actually up for this game like why does it take Liverpool to come to town just to spoil their party for us to get anything out of this team and let's be honest for 50 minutes we had absolutely nothing out of this team maybe that little first three minute spell where we had a goal disallowed which was clearly offside it is a major issue like we've seen performances like you said from uh, Maguire today not bad at all the midfield that you mentioned then Jay I just want to come to that before we forget that because that is where everyone had the issue today uh, who I spoke to and the fans inside the ground it was our midfield Casemiro I think was weak link today everyone said it I thought he had an awful game he had some moments where he recovered some bad passes but still his passing was awful his timings were awful uh, put us in some tricky situations with bad tackles as well especially in the second half uh, and he was bypassed with ease I thought in this game Jay and I think it's probably another shout for the people that were saying look if he is a possibility that we can get rid of him and get some money for him this summer then he does need to go we need to improve that department look um on on, on casemiro if scott mctominay played as bad today as casemiro the fan base would be turned their hair out and hard him on social media 
we all have a sauce of Casemiro, yes, me, me, me included. But today, we, we, we've got to analyze the performance today. Um, he was one of the worst players on the pitch today. Uh, he made it that, that that tackling, I think, in a 70 minute. He, he stopped the shot. And then that was it a professional foul? Was he taking off for the team at the end there where he, where he got a booking? But apart from that, I mean, you, you're in the ground. He's, he's passing with it. So. He did a show when maybe three weeks ago we were discussing keep a Casemiro senior player to be there as um, a mentor for um, Menu. But today for me, um, he looked as if his head was already um, playing in MLS or league. He was not on it today. No. It's crazy to think, isn't it, Jay? We're moaning about the midfield and two of the other members of our midfield were the ones that kept us in the game in a way with two wonder goals. Probably goal of the month contenders one and two with the finishes that we had. Uh, I was making a point about Bruno as well. I still think he had a poor game today. I do. Uh, and the thing I do like about Bruno, though, in his defence is he doesn't let it affect him and how he plays. He sticks to how he plays and... He had the audacity to go for the chip instead of running with the ball. It paid off. It worked. He chased back and stopped a clear goal. Uh, Seller going through in the late stages of the second half as well. He just has that capability to carry on playing the way he is and his style of play. Like The rest of the game was atrocious, but at least he took that chance. Uh, I don't think Kobe Mainu had his best game, but obviously he got the wonder goal. He was probably our best midfielder still, though, but I cannot expect Kobe Mainu to do any more when you've got two senior players like Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes that are underperf underperforming so much at the moment. It It's not really fair to even judge Kobe Mainu and his own performances. Like, he's having to work beyond himself and his normal duties, I feel, just for mistakes from our so-called senior players. We're banging the drum for senior players to be left in this squad and not get rid of everyone this summer. Yeah, our younger players, and I want to bring Willie Camberwaller into this as now as well now, Jay, are standing up and showing maturity beyond their years. And it's like, without the kids, I think this season would be a complete write-off, Jay. Yeah, I do I do mean you first. Um, I have it here, and I've said, uh, mean you composure and guile beyond his years. 18 years of age. Um, he takes it on his left, has that little poise, 50s right, and won the goal top corner. And so we got two young players in Granaccio and Menu that are already are in the running for goal this season. And they're young, what, 18 year old and 19 year old. And senior players kind of up to the mark. And secondly, then this, you, you're, you're after in Cambola today. I, I, I tweeted out um, for the game that my I, my heart Kambala playing beside Wire in like? his um <laughs> against the Liverpool front three. But that, that young kid today stepped up with a pair of big brass balls. I mean that that that, that kid today I give him the team to I thought. Like he's literally is like a gladiator today going to the lines then. He wasn't faced. And for a player that young have the mentality to hold it together, not make one mistake. He, I, I, you're in the ground, Adam. I, I'm watching TV. I didn't see the, that 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 chap make one mistake all day. You might you might tell me differently, but to have to have the mental capacity to do that for 97, 98 minutes against the the biggest rivals we have, in, like that that young kid has massive respect from the base today. Yeah, he did. He he did make a couple of straight passes early doors, uh, but. I'd, I'd announced the chase back, uh, had the awareness to get back and make up for his mistakes. Like he was a bit shaky, but he grew into the game, uh, Campbell Waller. He did. He's made some crunching tackles in the first half. He was composed. One thing, and I said it to Josh and Kaz, who was with me today in the stands, like, watch, I seen the first corner for Liverpool, and I said, watch Campbell Waller and what he does here. This is a, a graduate from the academy, young teenage lad going forward. He went into the Liverpool penalty area for our corner and just put himself underneath Virgil van Dijk, pressed himself, was a nuisance, basically took out of the game, out sorry, took out of the set piece Virgil van Dijk. He just went straight to him. 
And I said, that there is a man of confidence. That's a guy there. He said, it doesn't matter who he's coming up against. I'm wearing a Manchester United shirt. Expectations uh, are on my head. I'm going to go in here and just play ball. Like, I cannot and don't have the time to think about what might go wrong here against a good team. I have to go out there and just play my game. And you know what? He went out there with confidence played his game and came out of there today for me with man of the match personally uh, alongside him Harry Maguire as well I mean some mistakes again nothing major but solid I thought dealt with a very very quick quick Liverpool team which had no help from the midfield that defence by the way and we have to give them both props for that I remember Zaka again on his wrong side I don't want to I will get into that in a minute again uh, but I thought they dealt well with what was thrown at them and it was a bombardment. It really was. Quickly, super chat, super, super chat from Stephen Harper. Thank you so much for that, mate. Uh, Amrabat should have came on earlier for Cass to keep the forward momentum going uh, and mount uh, to the left in bed now. So no comments heard. Uh, some goal from the wee guy. <laughs> yes, Stephen. Uh, it was a great finish. Have a good sleep as well, Stephen. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for the super chat, uh, first and foremost, mate. But yeah, the the defensive side, we'll get into that now, mate, because uh, Kambawala, Maguire, we've talked about them. The fullbacks today, I want to talk about Dalo and Aaron Wambazaka. Again, Wambazaka preferred on the left hand side to deal with Mo Salah, I thought, uh, which in most part was fine. Uh, some people will bring up the fact that he's on that wrong side and he's challenged for that ball on Harvey Elliott in the box. Whether he's wrong for whatever you want to talk about. Some would say it wasn't even a penalty, but I'm just I'm I just want Ten Hag to stick people in positions that they're best at and just stick with it. Stop chopping and changing what doesn't need to be changed. Like we were overrun by Liverpool today, and it should have been five or six for Liverpool. They just were absolutely atrocious in the front uh in, in the forward department again, Liverpool, and, and couldn't finish their dinner. But the fullbacks and performance-wise for you, Jay, today, how did you see it? Because I thought Dello was in and out, good and bad. We've seen different moments from him, some world-class and some just shaky, completely out position ones. And then Wambazaka again, I don't know what to make of him at the moment. He's, he's a struggle for me. I think um, all fullbacks um, this season, and this goes to Dello and, and um, Aaron Wambazaka, they're, 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 they're like marmite. You would love them or hate them game to game. And Klopp spotted it when he brought on Harvey Elliott. Elliot, I should say. Elliot targeted Aaron Bissaka with every single run. I don't know how, I don't know probably if that was, was the stadium, but you can see El, Elliot knew that he could have Aaron Bissaka on toast. So we're watching, I'm watching TV and I, I'm seeing this. So sure then your manager on the bench thing, okay, he's been targeted. Switch Dello over and put him in Elliot and puts, but it wasn't done it time and time again. And the goal came from that side. Now, we're already fans watching the game and we can see Ed's target on Armand Bissaka, managers hands in his pockets. Again, the managers I fought as well today. Yeah, I thought it was, man. I've, I definitely, uh, I definitely thought he should have just stuck with. Putting one Bazaka on the right hand side. Forget this Salah thing. Dalo Dalo is comfortable handling Mo Salah, I think. I think Mo Salah is still a class player, but I think he is starting to show signs that it's coming to an end at the highest level for me personally. Some people may disagree with that. Uh I do I, I get your point in it, but I do think he is coming to an end. And I think Liverpool will struggle to replace Mo Salah as and replace Mo Salah without Jurgen Klopp as well. I think Liverpool needed this game today. I think they needed to win the game today. Uh, and United dealt with a lot of what Liverpool threw, threw at them quite well, I thought. Like, without pulling up any trees ourselves or really having a threat to Liverpool's goal, Liverpool, if they wanted that game, could have took it away from us. Uh, I thought Salah, not as effective as he could be. Uh, that's credit to Aaron Mambazaka again there. Dallo, uh, there was a great moment in the... A second half where the ball was in orbit and it just came down and he took it on the turn and turned inside and ran through 
uh, the midfield. It was absolutely brilliant. But there were times in that first half where he was completely out of position because of the inverted fullback system again that Tenag is playing. Like you were saying there, Tenag has to take some responsibility for this. Jay, but there were times when Dallo was in that inverted position and there was acres of space, absolutely acres of space for Diaz on that left-hand side. And then marking, like, who was marking who for the corner, Jay? Uh, like, literally, Liverpool couldn't finish anything in open play. They needed a set piece and a, a, a penalty. Uh, we just gifted them to him, gifted the goals to them, I thought, when it, it might have been even complete, it could have been even more of a different game if Manchester United was switched on in defence. Like, like I, I think I, I sent you that, that picture, actually, the, the, the screenshot um, from half-time uh, for Liverpool's first goal. Uh, with Diaz, we had five players standing inside a six-yard box. Five. And they were all asleep or acting like, like, like statues. And that, again, goes back to um, the point we said that once we're done, that's very early in the game. Like, after two minutes, the first two minutes of the game, you thought, okay, this is going to be true, right? Because in two minutes, Onana makes that save from Bosnia, and then Garnacho is, is, is offside. In the first two minutes, you think, okay, here, guys, strap yourselves in. And then that screenshot, the five players inside a six-yard box, all watching, Liverpool 1-0. And all of a sudden, straight away, Adam, you know, you go 1-0 down. Home or away, it doesn't matter who we're bloody playing, the head is dropped. And the head stayed dropped, Adam, until Bruno managed to get that volley in the minute. And that's where we are as a, as, a, as, a, as a team and as a club. And a lot of it reflects back on the manager. It does. It does. Like, going out into that second half, you're like, what do United do? I was talking at half time, and I was like, honestly, Jay was scratching my head. I was like, I don't know how we get back into this game. I looked at the bench and I thought, you bring Mason Mount on, you bring Anthony on, and you bring Ahmad on. And that changes this game. It gives us a new lease of life up front. Rashford just didn't look like he what looked like he didn't want to be there. He didn't. When he had the chance, he just went get me off. Like the gut off. But I actually thought that the first substitutions coming in were going to be Highland out and Rashford moves into number nine again, which would have been a complete waste of time. Rashford was not on it from the get go. Was not. Uh, we're not too uh, unaccustomed to that this season. But well, Ten Hag, I just think, got lucky again a bit today. The momentum swung with that mistake from Kwanzaa. And I, from what I've heard and what I've read of his press conference, obviously I was working outside and then travelling home, so I've not seen it all yet. So forgive me if I've got some wrong. But he was going on about being disappointed that they didn't get the win. Like, you were lucky to be in the game, I thought. The team had no structure. I made a point of this, Jane. I don't know if anyone else picked out one. Liverpool, when they were in possession from the goalkeeper, had two defenders on the edge of the box. Then they had a line of four players with one man further forward just in front of the front two. So, in fact, 2-4-1-2 two, two was their system when the goalkeeper had possession. Manchester United didn't know what to do with the two and the four, so got caught in no man's land. They were scared of the pace of Liverpool on the break, so they were sat too deep, uh, as in Casemiro was sat too deep. The front four then went forward, leaving the gap for Sapozlai to basically run the show in the middle of the park. And because we are slow at the back, the gap from midfield to defence is gaping, and Liverpool created everything from there. Like, another 28 shots conceded by Manchester United today again. And that is where Ten Hag needs to get to grip. He needs to just commit to the higher line, the full press, or just sit deep. Let Liverpool have the ball in their own half and do something from there. He's stuck in between systems and he needs to make his mind up. He doesn't know the best positions for each player and he doesn't know what his best system is. We get through these Liverpool games recently but just by, feel, by feeding off hot air, hot air and adrenaline. We had that moment and the whole stadium changed. Liverpool got nervous, they got shaky and they could have fallen apart again. But that wasn't through our own creation. That was just one of our stars taking that moment again, Jay. That moment's FC. Like, Liverpool switched off. United took advantage. We had a 20-minute spell. But that was pretty much it, Jay. Liverpool were the ones knocking on the door later on in that game. I want to come to you on something else as well. But on that style of play, like sitting too deep and pressing high and having both systems in play that don't work together, Jay. Uh, 
I think this is why teams are finding it easy to play against us. I think, Adam, if Karsmir had said any deeper today, he'd have been sitting between you and Cass in the stand. Mm. And, you, and you referenced you referenced there, and you're spot on, playing two distinct systems constantly over and over, and we constantly get overrun in midfield. Now, you understand I'm at home with everybody else, and we, we can see this, but the manager persists with this. What we said many times on other shows, what's the issue of insanity? doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the result. That's our that's our manager. Now we we'll go on and on, Adam, about mentality of players and Rashford being being what he is. And I, I I think he's a coward. But the manager sets the team up. The structure's on him. Mm. Yeah, Stu says Eric Tanag said he doesn't care uh doesn't care what we say, the style of play is clear. The man's cuckoo. I don't know if he said that. Has he said that? That is mental if he has said that. We was winning until the last minutes. We got fluffed by the EPL. Uh, Mount could have started on the right wing, says Rajat. Adam, we have done this all season. We know this. You know this. Eric Tanag, not so much. Uh, Mount would give uh, a great creative aspect, says Bexy as well. Uh, Tanag, I don't know if he said that. I'll have to read into uh, them quotes again uh, on what he's talking about with people's opinions. Like He doesn't care what people think. He's a very stubborn man. We know that. Some will say that's a good trait to have as a manager. You stick to your guns. You stick to your philosophy. Uh, but don't expect to not get criticism when it all goes wrong. Because if he thinks it's working and he can see the team progressing, but the results are not coming, then people are going to ask questions. Uh, it's like the next question I'm going to ask you, Jay. It's like the last three games, Manchester United have been gifted opportunities back into the game. Like, yeah, we did well to come back against Chelsea. We were on the brink against Brentford and got lucky, but we went in front. We got back in front against Chelsea. We were in back in front again today against Liverpool. It's like we cannot handle being in front. It's like the normal Manchester United routine in the game right now is to play crap and somehow find themselves in front and then just revert back to trying to make everything hard again because we cannot handle being in front. We can't put teams to bed, Jay. Like, you can say that we were good to show resilience in all of them games to stay in it when we were bad. Fair enough. But what about winning? What about winning games when you're in a winning position? We cannot do this. This is the problem, Jay. And I don't know if Ten Hag has got it in him to change this. He's definitely not got it in him to change it from now until the end of the season where it matters. Because everything's gone now. But the question to you, Jay, is I'll just say, like, the issue that I'm seeing at the moment is the weak mentality of the players when they get in front. It's like you've been gifted the opportunity to take this game away here and you've just reverted back to sitting deep and expecting to come under pressure. It's like, what is that mentality? That's not a winning one for me. No, it's not. And... That you referenced um, there, Mason Mount. Could you start today? Um, Anthony had his best game um, ever for the club against Chelsea. He should have started. There's no way Marcus mm. Rashford should be near pitch today. Anthony was good when he came on. Okay, okay. Anthony, he was good when he came on. He really was. And, and like we've gone hard on Anthony many, many times. And he's the manager signing. So you said about um, the manager being stubborn, and he is, but Anthony is your sign. I know, no, I'm dressing his time, but Anthony's your signing. He's doing well. He's simple. He's simple. Um, one week, start the chap again. Can you imagine your Anthony, how close you are there? Your, your man, IX, has had you to come. You're on massive wages. You've had your best game for the club, and then suddenly you're back on the bench again for an underperforming um, uh, Max Rashford. So that goes, so, so that, that saves you in through the team. We are in we have three games, though. We cannot close the game out. So the question that I want to ask everybody in the fan base is this. You're a player and you have a manager that has not instilled in you over the course of almost two years how to close a game out, how to actually win by any means necessary. And that's what sports all about. You win by any means necessary. Your player, your manager has not instilled that. So surely you're on the pitch with five minutes to go, whatever. 
your your brain, your your decision making process has nothing then but indecision, lack of confidence. Because your manager has not inspired in you the rootlessness and the will to win. So as a player, what do you do? You literally shit the bed time and time again because because that because your manager has not instilled it in you. Mm. That's true. That is true. He has got to play that part. That is that's part of his uh, du- his jobs and his duties as a football manager. Like he has to install confidence in these players to play a certain way. And if they cannot do that, then one or the other has to go. And ultimately, it all is always the same. It is always the manager that will suffer and go. But he is the one coming out and trying to talk a different game to what has just happened as well. I think he is burying himself. I don't want to get too much into that. Uh, but uh, MDR, MDR in. Again, with a super chat, thank you, my man. Uh, This game is a complete fluke, in my opinion. Unless we improve over the next three fixtures against Bournemouth, Sheffield United and Burnley and blow them completely off the pitch, and I feel bad if he didn't see how good Camberwala is. Uh, Camberwala, I think, definitely starts next game. MDR, cheers for that super again, mate. I think he's earned his spot. Uh, We've heard from Ten Hag again today, Jay, that... Uh, Johnny Evans and Varane are not anywhere near ready for the foreseeable. So going into the Bournemouth game, it looks like Harry Maguire and Camberwaller again. Uh, I don't think anyone's really disappointed in that. I don't think that was the real issue today. Like we said, the midfield again. But you're going to come up against the Bournemouth side on Saturday, Jay, which is a different kettle of fish to Liverpool again. They're going to want Manchester United to probably have a bit more of the ball and then see what they can do and hit us. And I think this is where that winning mentality that you just spoke about then and the manager installing that confidence in the team, that comes into it, especially in games like Bournemouth away, where you have to go there and win. Like, you cannot sit back and just expect to just battle out games like we have against Liverpool and just turn up in a game like that with no plan at all. There needs to be a game plan. The players need to go into that game thinking that they can win because I'm looking at the games that we're going into. Now it's like Chelsea was reactional. Liverpool, we was lucky. Brentford was just outright awful. And I don't know what's coming this weekend against Bournemouth, but that midfield that you said there, Jay, it needs to it needs to shape up. It really does. And why he's not giving Mount more game time, only he knows. And it's a bit of a concern myself because if he can only play certain amounts of minutes per game, it's like, what is the point? Like, I don't think Tenag is going to ever see the best of Mason Mount because I don't think he'll be in a job unless he gets Champions League, which I don't think is doable now. Yeah, I I don't think it is. And you referenced there in it's in it's Bournemouth. Um, you're you're Bournemouth. You're, you're thinking, okay, you're not coming to town. Let them have the ball. It's a case of come and have a go if you're hard enough. And then um, the counter tackles that pump the ball to Slanky, and have Slanky take taking on Maguire and Cambrala. It's very very simple. United will have to shoot the ball against Bournemouth, and literally, what can they do with it? Will they have will they have the strength of conviction? in their playing style and in and will the players have the conviction in their teammates around them to take on Bournemouth and man I don't think they have I, I hope I'm wrong I, I want to be wrong like I want to I want to go and meet you in Manchester in a few weeks time against Arsenal with us literally teetering between fifth sixth and fighting for um that Europa League spot or Champions League spot but I, I fear in three games time that could be a pipe dream yeah God, I know. That's crazy, isn't it? I'm going to go into the chat. Uh, Lee Dixon says, Liverpool ain't winning the league now. Klopp's season is done now. Boxing straight talk. Simon Jordan said, when Ten Hag signed for us, uh, I'm not sure the suit fits him. Boy, do I understand what he meant by that. MDR Samurai, I have to run, guys and gals. Love you guys. Forever United TV. Uh, everyone, be safe. Uh, smash the likes for Adam and Jay. Cheers for that, MDRN. Love that. Thanks, mate, for all your contributions tonight as well. Alien Tennell says, here's some no-brainers. If you know, you know. Camberwala slash Bennett. Maynou slash Gore next season. I don't know if we'll get that, mate. I think there'll be a few more new faces in, but maybe not all young players. It would be nice. Guys, please give the video a like uh, and please do subscribe as well if you are tuning in for the first time. Make sure you download our Sofa Score app. Them stats and XGs and possession and everything we're talking about came from our Sofa Score app today. Uh, download the app for free if you click on the link in the description below. 
or scan the QR code on your screen there. You would have seen Manchester United concede another 28 shots to Liverpool today. Seems to be the going rate right now with Manchester United in games. But yeah, that was down to Sofa Score. Thanks to them, our partners. Get that app downloaded, guys. It is completely free. Uh, Jarvis Cocker says, Camberwell was fantastic. Grew into the game. Let him play the rest of the season. He's ready. Uh, I don't know about ready, but he can definitely learn how to be ready if he plays more games. I agree with that, Jarvis. Uh, but uh, as a player, Jay, should that not be natural instinct to hold out the game? You're a professional footballer. Yeah, I mean, Jay answering that in terms of the professional footballer side of thing. Mel's just posing the question there regarding what the manager has to do on that. We've talked about the players as well, haven't we? Like, show some pride, show some self-awareness in all of this. Okay, so on my um, right shoulder, there's some um, United Legends. My partner got me this during the week as a, as a present. The guys behind on my right shoulder, they didn't need a manager to motivate them because they were self-motivated. That was just different times. Uh, players now, they're not in uh, mindset. They're not fighters of war back in the 90s and 90s. And people will call me old-fashioned for saying that. So when they're players, they, they need that manager in their ear constantly motivating them. Unfortunately, professional footballers nowadays, that they need that spark lit onto them over and over and over again. Because I don't think they're self-motivated because money has ruined them. They're millionaires. Um, they've made their money. Or they, they can retire on a big fat pension pot. So they, they don't care. And so that's uh, therefore the manager has come into play. Like I'm, I'm sure today, um, Klopp, these players are super motivated. They just couldn't finish the dinner. Our players aren't because they're millionaires. They're just social media um, kings. I don't, I don't think they're enough anymore, Adam. Our players are. Live players do. You can see them leaving the pitch today. They're crestfallen. Our players, look at this, the body language. I just don't need to care enough, Adam. No, it does seem that way. Like, it doesn't hurt them as much, does it? That is a worry for all United fans that you look at the body language of the players, it's like, get me off the pitch, like, moments. Like, I'm not going to bring up the down and tool side things again, but, like, what's the reaction afterwards? It doesn't seem to hurt them. It really doesn't. And that's the worrying sign, Jay. I think you're right on that one because you can see it. It's like, yeah, praise us and laud us once we get a good result. But how dare you criticise us when we are bad? Like, they want it the best both worlds, I think, these players. But the biggest thing, and I think it's a good point that you make, Jay, is that these players don't seem to have uh, the same pain as others. They don't seem to want it as much as others. And like, Brentford were a perfect example of that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like, sorry, last week. And I think that result is still ringing in our ears, like in in our memory, like how we did not want to compete with Brentford. Like we thought we were too good for Brentford. Like that's how it seemed. Like we just needed to turn up on that pitch and everything would just take care of itself. Like it doesn't look to me like they want to work for it as much. Like you can say they're putting their effort in, but it's not all about physical effort. It's about that mental strength as well, Jay. It's like, oh God, we've conceded again. We're really unlucky there. That's the third penalty in two games. Well, no. You haven't got time to think like that. It's a good point, Jake, that, that you make there with that one uh, with, regarding how much this actually hurts the players because when you paid the big, big money, is it really? Does it really matter? Like It's it's a hard one, isn't it? Like Because that's how we see it, just come from what we watch on the pitch. Yeah, it is. And like... Tomorrow morning, you got to get up and everybody watching here um, crack a dawn probably and go and do a day's hard graft to, to pay your bills. These players tomorrow have a nice little recovery day where they're going to come in, um, do some foam rolling, do some massage, a little um, post-match as talk and probably be home at 12 o'clock. So they're not up today, Adam, but the fans are. Mm. The fans are the only ones that are going to suffer in the end. They really are. Uh <clears throat> Uh, uh, Agile Beast 21 says Willie Kay has the physical attributes to become a top centre back. We really need to play him when, uh, even when our aging defenders are back fit. I agree with that. He needs to be in the reckoning. Luis says there is no hunger or self pride or ability to self motivate anymore these days. 
Uh, Brett says, 100% J. These United players are shameless. They are impossible to shame. Yeah, bad, uh Get rid of these old players before they ruin the young ones, uh, says Hunter. It's like Rasmus Highland looked a bit lost today for me, Jay, as well. Uh, like I don't know if it's been dragging him down as well. I've seen him having a go at Rashford big time in the second half as well when he didn't pass the ball across. Really. It's like it. it's okay to go for a while. Like You can try and figure things out. You can try and have these sort of powwows and meetings and sort of clear the air talks and stuff, but... When players are still going glory hunting, then it, the same old problems are going to come up. And I think it's starting to grind on Rasmus Highland now as well. Like a player that was showing promise just back from injury, but he looks a shadow of the player that was playing in that red shirt before we got that injury now, Jay. Look, um, I think we can all agree uh, Highland is a, is, is a massive talent, massive potential. It's massive on tap potential. If he has to spend, God forbid, the next five years of his career playing beside the likes of Rashford on the wing, I'm going to call it now, Hoyland would not achieve his full potential. And his frustration today with Rashford was palatable. Like, on a reference earlier on about um, Anthony, Anthony is what he is. Um, would he realize his potential on Ten Hag? Probably not. But he actually will put across in the box as limited as he is. We saw it last week. Rashford is stunting the growth of Rasmus Hoyland. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and that's on a, that's, that's on a manager. Rashford, I referenced earlier on about um, players having the money made and, and not caring. It's very, very clear. Rashford does not care. His money is made. He's a millionaire. Poor spoiler the club. Um, Gerard had the moment of getting two buses to training as a kid. I remember his interview, um, um, bus wankers and all that. Remember that one? So, Hoyland frustration today was palatable. Take the frustration of Hoyland today playing at Rashford as an indication of frustration within the younger players. They, the younger players clearly want to achieve. They want to achieve potential. One game. But the older players, they're set for life. They're comfortable. They're in life luxury. They don't care. Yeah. So it goes back to what we said on, a, on another um, show about the club needing to cull certain individuals from a dressing room and change the culture of a dressing room. I think it's a cultural problem. And it's been there for many years. That happened this season. Like, it goes it goes back for years. It goes back from um post Ags post Ferguson when when um when, when Moyes came in, it goes back probably ten years. It's a cultural change that's needed in the club. Yeah, definitely. Uh Rodders, this Man United team need a Roy Keane character. Move main to number ten, says Bacon Butty. Boxing straight talk. If you're if you're a player and you're asked to buy into something that goes against your beliefs of how or what is possible, what would you do? Uh he shouldn't be playing every game. Rasmus' positioning needs some work. I agree. Adam Island already looks doesn't look like the player we bought anymore. Uh, I was loving it when Rasmus shouted at Rashford. Need to see more of that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Lee Dixon, if they don't want to play in Champions League nights, they won't be at Old Trafford long. No, they will not. Uh, but pretty much, guys, that is us. All done and dusted. Uh, that went really quick, actually. <laughs> uh, we move on to Bournemouth. Obviously, next weekend, uh, we will be doing uh, watch along as usual on that one, guys. Uh, so, yeah, uh, all that's left for me to say is thank you, everybody, for your super chats, all of your comments in the live section as well. Uh, and, Jake, uh, massive thank you to you again. Give the people another shout out where we can get you. Uh, so, if you want, um, I suppose, some short quips on morning time, go to um, X uh, J D Mourinho, and I'm going to do a little post match now on Twitter. Uh, sorry, on, on TikTok at, at Real TikTok. J Daily. That's the one. Get onto it, guys. Uh, Josh, I can see you in the chat there as well. Who did your first 
uh, match vlog today. You did excellent, mate. Thank you for coming on. Do go and watch all of the vlogs, guys. There's a few more to come out as well yet. They'll be posted uh, through the night. Uh, and yes, uh, go and enjoy yourselves. Uh, what's left of the weekend? There's not much because it's nearly 10 o'clock here, so I'm guessing it's late for you guys as well. But that is us all done. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a hell of a weekend, and United move forward again. On to Bournemouth next weekend. Uh, I don't know about the fight for our Champions League. For me, that is dead. Uh, I don't know about you guys. We'll see uh, as the week goes on. That Champions League will be played out, and we'll be watching other teams compete in it again. Sad state of affairs, but that is where United are at right now. Guys, thank you for tuning in all day. I will see you all tomorrow, 12 o'clock, back with a live show tomorrow lunchtime. Have a great evening.